Have you ever come across a very weird looking website that offers you a very good deal or even giving you free access into an initially paid website or an initially paid application? Or have you even come across a very suspicious login attempt into your social media account or even your bank account or even any accounts that you may have keep information in it? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera My name is Muhammad Aziz bin Shamsu Izran and in this video I will be talking to you guys about the cybercrime activities in Malaysia So we move back in time to the year of 1834 where the first cybercrime activity was conducted So the French telegraph system received a call from a group of French thieves saying that they need information on ways to, to invest in the stock market But little did they know the French telegraph system have given away so many important informations to the group. So what the group did was they used the information to topple the French telegraph system for their own benefit. So ever since then, it was written in the book of histories that it was the first cybercrime activity conducted in the world. So we move back into the present of time, which is in the year of 2021. We've seen so many ways of people trying to conduct the cybercrime activities such as spreading the rabbit, rabbit virus, spreading Trojan horse virus, conducting fraud, or even conducting credit card transactions fraud. So in the year of 2021, in tally with the Movement Control Order MCO 1.0 back in March 2020. So in the year of 2020, Malaysia have recorded a whooping of 82.5% in the rise of cybercrime activities. It is very very worrying as we move towards a world towards digitalization era because we are trying to reduce the use of paper we don't want to use too much of our natural resources we're just going to focus on our electronic devices where we can gather any information by the tip of our own finger so in this problem we've seen that there have been so many fraud cases so as you can see on my right this is a statistics on how much fraud cases or maybe just digital cybercrime activities have been done in the year of 2020. We've seen that fraud have gone into 5,000 cases. Yes, 5,000 cases, that's a lot. And according to a group of hackers from the movie Social Dilemma from Netflix, and it is indeed based on true story, saying that this, this group of people want to psychologically manipulate people as fast as possible because by doing so, they will not just gain any source of income and they will not just gain many source of income but they will also manipulate people into always giving the income flowing towards them as in like, they give it, they're giving them information and they will, they will be able to use the information over and over and over without the people even knowing that's a bit scary, right? I mean, it's not just a bit, but that's so, so scary so on my left over here, you can see that while we move towards a digitalization era, we can see that there have been so many challenging factors in expanding the digital products in Malaysia. And as I've mentioned earlier about fraud, you can see that the top data is saying about fraud prevention. So to not be too shabby in this, in this situation, I'm not just saying that Malaysians don't know how to use their digital products to the finest because we including i including myself that i don't really know what's going on with what i'm doing in my social life by using the internet many third parties can get the information such as i'll take a simple example such as zoom it was reported in the year of 2020 500 people 500 people information of the 500 people have been gathered by by a group of third party people and ever since then people are trying to stop using zoom but what can we do because we are in a world where this pandemic does not allow us to go out to meet our people, to conduct our social activities, or even go to meetings. So we have to use this type of platform for us to allow us to engage to certain people and in order to get the work done. But the Zoom Incorporated have revealed that they have nothing to do with gathering information towards these 500 people. So what does that say? Even if the even if the application assures you that there will be no third parties engaging into your information, there will always be a group of people gathering your information from it. Because we will never know. We will never know. So, 
So what are we going to do in order for us to tackle this problem while we're moving into the digitalization era of the world? And how do we prevent this from happening? Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for watching.